Welcome. You're listening to the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast, creatively engineered by Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist. I'm Wired to Inspire is a powerfully packed five-minute podcast filled with inspiration and encouragement to get you through your day. It's designed to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Now stay tuned for your host, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist on today's episode of I'm Wired to Inspire. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my podcast. Y'all, I had a real interesting weekend, had a lot of fun, um, and I was hanging out a little while with my friend's mom, and she was just talking to us, just kind of giving us that good old wisdom, you know what I'm saying, just running it about different things, and she made a statement to me that I never heard of, maybe you guys have heard it before, but she said, select, don't settle, You know, and immediately, you know, I started thinking, I'm like, oh, my God, like, that's dope. Like, wow. You know, that just sounded really deep and really, you know, on point to me. And then I just kind of started musing on it because I knew exactly, you know, what she was getting at by by saying that. And we were talking about relationships. And I just started really like thinking. I said, you know what, Lord? I said, I I feel like this is something I'm going to have to put on the podcast because just that title alone just got alone, just got the wheels turning for me. Right. And I started thinking, I said, my God, man, this is this is interesting. So select don't settle. Right. And immediately when I started to like break it down in my mind, I'm like, okay, Robin. So what's it like when you select something? Right. Then I started thinking about what what's it like when I end up settling for something? And I had the biggest epiphany. Okay, now I'm not going to keep you all long today, but I just want to drop this on somebody because I know It's going to cause you to think I felt led to send it and post it. So I just want to just I want you to think about something. So think about what it's like when you select something and what happens when you settle. Think about the process of both. Now, I can't speak for anybody else, but you know what I figured out? Nine times out of ten, when I select, I end up settling. (laughs) And it's funny because. When she was telling us to select and don't settle, I totally got what she was saying. And I knew what she meant. Like, don't just settle for some regular, you know, uh, running the mill. I'm going to just do the bare minimum. I don't really care about you. I don't have your back type of dude. I knew what she meant that. Like, I knew what she, excuse me. I knew what she meant by that. Like, don't just get with somebody who's selfish and, you know, they're not about you. You know, we talk more in depth about that kind of thing. You know, and just being careful about guys who like shiny stuff and just want the hottest thing popping and all that. She was really, you know, breaking that kind of stuff down for us. But what really stood out to me was when I thought about it from that other perspective. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. See, it sounds cute for me to say select, don't settle. But I realized that when I take the selection process into my own hands, and I'm not talking about no man. I'm talking about that too, yes. But I'm talking about every area of my life. I have made some of the stupidest choices <laughs> known to man for my own personal life, right? And it was usually because I was at the helm. You know, it wasn't God at the helm of it. It wasn't, it wasn't him leading me, directing me, and guiding me, right? So I thought about it. I said, you know what? This is a true statement. But for me, I had to edit it for it to be the perfect statement for me. And I don't know how you're going to feel about it, but think about this. If we give God the permission, we give him the, because, you know, again, and what I mean by that, we don't have to give God permission for anything. So follow me when I say this, you know, we have free will. So what I figured was, Lord, I give you permission. I'm going to give you my free will because I know you're not going to trump that because your word does not lie. You're not going to contradict yourself. But how about this? I am going to give you, I'm relinquish control of my free will, Lord. And I want you to take over my free will. I want you to select for me so that I don't settle. See that? And some people are like, oh, God, you know, what do you mean? I mean, you still got to do whatever and you're still living and still still a human being. Absolutely. I'm not asking Jesus to step down off the cross and do anything for me. But what I am asking him to do is this with the ability and the authority that he gave me. I know that when I try to pick for myself, I squander opportunities and I end up in squalor. I end up thinking that everything is perfect. Everything looks great. It, everything adds up and then boom, I end up settling because there's always that part that God can see that you can't. And sometimes I know back in the day and I mean, and I'm, I keep saying back in the day, but I mean, sure, I'm gonna keep it 100. I still struggle. 
I, I think it's just a part of the human condition. You struggle with your faith and, you know, really trying to understand your walk with Christ, especially as you you moving forward in your relationship. You know, it's definitely a journey It's definitely something where you have to, you know, really take time and say, OK, God, I want this whole thing to go the way you want it to go. I've made the mistakes myself. I've done it my way. I don't want to do it my way anymore. I'm over myself. And I think that's where I'm at in my life now. Like, I'm just over myself. Because uh, let me tell y'all, when I did give God that, you know, when I did have that conversation with God and say, hey, God, you select for me, you choose. I think he was sending somebody. I think he was sending opportunities. I think he was sending things that I did not recognize because it wasn't in a package I thought it would have been in. And, you know, again, God is not going to force you. He's not going to make you do anything. And even with my saying, oh, I want your will, God. Nothing ever happened because I just didn't, you know, I, I don't know what it was with me, but because I was too busy trying to select and I was too busy trying to avoid settling, I ended up selecting a process, a person, a situation, an opportunity that ended up causing me to settle because my selection process is skewed. I don't see myself. Excuse me. I can't see what God sees. That's what I meant to say. I can't see what God sees. He can see what I can't. And I constantly pray, let me see myself, let me see these situations, let me see my life the way you see it, so that I can operate in excellence consistently. Consistently, And I didn't do that all the time. So when I got to this place of understanding, like, okay, here this, okay, this can be a thing here. I really need to see God on allowing that process, saying, God, you know what, I give you control. I break it down, I'm done, I give you the full control over my life, you do it. You do whatever it needs that whatever needs to happen, because I am not the person that can do this the way I thought it should have been done. I'm not. I, I just don't have it right for myself. Now, you're thinking, OK, well, you are who you are. You have to deal with your choices and consequences. But sure, when you come into a, a dope relationship with God and you can say, OK, God, I think I made a mistake. OK, I think I might have moved too fast on this. I think I might have moved too slow on this. OK, I think I just completely jacked this up and I didn't even fix it or clean it up. Could you help me? See, when we start getting to those places and we begin to see it from another perspective, that's when Christ can step in and say, OK, listen, I made you new. Let's get this thing popping. That's when you allow that situation to grow and blossom in another direction because you're saying, OK, God, I give you my control. I give you my power. I'm done trying to do it myself. Thank you for giving me the ability to select. But I understand through your word that nothing is impossible with you. Right. And I also know that you don't switch up. You don't switch up. I switch up all the time. So I can go selecting somebody and picking some opportunity or getting into something that I think is right. And it's because I switch up and it's the wrong thing, you know, but you don't switch up on me. So I think when I got to that personal space, I'm like, you know what? He don't switch up. I'm human. I'm fickle. I don't know. You know, sometimes I don't know if I'm coming or going. I'm like, is this you, God? Is this not you? And y'all, for the most part. I know when I'm hearing God and I, and again, that's why the word is so good because it shows you how to test the spirits. It tells you how to throw that thing back up there and get that confirmation and know that it's not the enemy. Because again, so many people think they're getting constant confirmation about somebody, constant confident confirmation about a person, uh, a, a person affiliated with a business opportunity. And I keep mentioning the same things because for whatever reason, I think whoever's listening, those are the areas that have been coming up for them. And also family. There's some choices you make with your family or about your family. And you begin to realize, man, this may not have been the wisest decision because you might be doing it from a place of, well, I don't want to see them get hurt. or I don't want to do this like this. And you, you're really stepping in God's shoes because you you're not doing his will. Sometimes his will concerning our family, concerning our relationships is not the will that we have because we feel like we're going to be hurt or we feel like they're going to be hurt and we're not letting God do his job. He has to do the job. He has to be the one to make it plain. He needs to be the one to handle it. So again, after that conversation, I just wanted to drop that with you guys today. And I want to let you marinate on this, marinate on this today. Okay. What happens when I select and what happens when I settle? And like I said, I've determined that when I select, I end up settling. So now I am going to allow God to select for me. And then I know that I will never settle. I'm wired to inspire. I hope you are too. It's the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast giveaway. Stay tuned for instructions.
Hey everyone, and these are your instructions for the March giveaway on the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast. Now guys, I'm going to be giving away five books this month. I have the Healing Experience Workbook, and with that, you'll get all of the episodes. So far, we're 10 episodes in of the podcast to go with the actual workbook, and you'll be able to get free access to our private Facebook group, and you get an instructional recording. So I will be giving away one of those every week of March. So the instructions are extremely simple, and all you have to do is simply tag a friend that inspires you for a chance to win a copy of the Healing Experience Workbook. A copy will be given out every week in March and you must be following at Robin Nicole K and I'm wired to inspire for your entry to be valid and that's it guys good luck thanks for listening to I'm wired to inspire podcast at I'm wired to inspire.com if you enjoyed the show spread the word and be sure to hit the five star rating on iTunes for more information on this podcast and inspirational products and services Log on to the inspiration specialist.life or I'm wired to inspire.com and remember to live your authentic purpose. Thanks again and see you next time.